bitch, you a bird, you thigh, you learn, you see, I earn, you stop, a word, I shoot, no rim, I'm high, you burn, I'm me, that's him, you not, that's word. UFC St. Louis, May 11th. By the time this interview drops, it'll be fight week. So, Billy Goff, happy fight week. When do you travel? Um, I head out on Tuesday. Um, I get to leave a little later this time. Uh, Singapore, I left around, I left Sunday. Got, it, got in Monday morning or something like that. Word, man. And we haven't seen you. I haven't talked to you in a while. But since your August debut, big win. What have you been up to, man? Like, why haven't we seen you in so long? Uh, I got in a car accident that kind of threw me off yeah. uh, for a while. Uh, and then I, it was just hard to get a fight. It, there's The division's kind of bloated. There's a lot of people in it. Um, so it was, they're pretty busy booking other fights. Um, and it was, So, yeah, it was just hard to get a fight. And, dude, like, I, I saw that car accident. One, thank God you're okay. But, two, uh, kind of detail the story around that. Because, obviously, any car accident is a freak circumstance, usually. But... This was a little bit different. Uh, there were some different circumstances surrounding this one. Yeah, so I um, it was I had hit a parked car um, on the highway. It was a trooper that was blocking some debris, um, and I had just gone that way earlier, and there was nobody there. But in the time that I had passed, um, and I was just being lazy, not paying attention. I was looking at the side of the highway as I was coming over, and then I looked down at all the fancy new gadgets i had just bought the car uh for my mom uh, i was a uh, brand new ish car um and i just it was like two hours after i took it off the lot um uh, heading over the bridge uh I checked, just being lazy not paying attention um and i don't remember it um i i remember look going over the bridge i remember kind of looking off um, vague memory of kind of looking down, looking up at the last second, and then there was the car. Um, I I was told I slammed on the brakes. Um, he was parked in halfway in the lane, so I uh, I hit halfway on, uh, spun out, hit two more cars, and then hit the guardrail on the other side. Um, and then I, I I was told I got out and laid down on the side of the road. Jeez, man! Like, but I I don't remember any of it. I I, the, I remember I really I have I remember looking at the side of the road, um, and I remember the next thing was EMT standing above me. Well, thank God you're still here, able to tell the story, man. Like that's horrible. Glad you're good in health and everything's okay now. Did Did your mom get a new car? Uh, well, she's been using. I have a work car and a personal car. I've let her use my personal car. So you got to win more fights and buy her so, new car, is what you're telling me. Pretty much get a bonus this time and then then i'll buy you another one all right we'll say less man we, we we you can make that happen no problem um and successful debut like you said it was going to happen in our interview you got it done how was that experience all the way across the world it was it was between the traveling i traveling back was awful because i was it was post fight i was sick i didn't sleep well um the so tra I had a headache traveling back for 23 hours. was horrible. Uh, but traveling out there was fine. I slept for most of it. Um, it was a beautiful country. Uh, a lot of very uh, nice people, very friendly people. Uh, the, uh, a lot of it's, it's, a, it's a country with a lot of immigration. So even though it's foreign for me, it's also there's a huge mix of other cultures mixed into it as well um and it was just a great time um the fighting wise it was my first experience with the ufc so that was all uh stars and whatnot uh walking to the cage uh being in the cage the whole moment everything went as best as it, as it could and was there anything in there like you weren't expecting in terms of like the magnitude of the fight or was it kind of what you were expecting and you feel like you got it in the books now you're ready for the UFC? Yeah, I, I, I believe I, it wasn't anything crazy to where it's like, Oh, this is different. Oh, this is odd. Um, they run it very smoothly. They, uh, so it was, there's not really that many hiccups. Uh, they, it's done very like it's like I said. It's very smoothly, very professional. Uh, so there was no bumps or some or any chaos. Uh, 
I made weight, my opponent made weight, and in the cage there was it was just like a regular fight, except for now it's now it says UFC in the middle. And you got that knockout. Beautiful, oh, yeah. beautiful. And I mean, you know, so I've, since you've been healthy, training at uh, Team Roughhouse, Team Dexter. How's the long ass camp been? You know, you got a UFC uh, fight in your books, then you get hurt, and then you got to come back to health. Like, has that changed anything in the camp, or you pick up right where you left off? I mean, I had time to work on a lot of stuff, and um, the biggest thing was I didn't have a fight until like I had multiple months where I didn't have a fight, so I was getting ready for a potential fight. So it wasn't like geared to a specific person. So it just gave me the opportunity to work as if I had a fight. So I was working very hard um, and just focusing on what I, I need to get better at, focusing on little things that I need to do. Um, so I was able to learn a lot. Um, I'm in great shape. I've had a very long camp. I've been trying to get a fight since uh, the beginning of the year. So it's basically a five-month camp. But I know Trey is also he, – he's had a long time off uh, since his debut. So he's – whether he's been training or not, who knows, but I'm sure he's been training for this one for at least a couple months. Um, and I've had a couple teammates who have had fights recently, so going through their camps have helped my camp peaking wise. Uh, I had Jake Caskey, Eric Zane, they both had great fights uh, in uh, Cage Titans March 30th, and then Austin Shala made his pro debut April 20th. Jerry Sweet made his amateur debut. Fights didn't go our way that night, but they they're still they're tough, and I respect them. And I'm glad to be a part of their team. All right, you guys are young, hungry team. Going to blow up very soon. You guys are, like, finally starting to all, like, piggyback and take those big steps up. So it's uh, it's cool to see. But I didn't realize Trey Waters was, like, 6'7 or 6'8. Or like, you guys six got five. any – he's 6'5? Okay. You, you guys got anyone that big in the gym to be training with? No. <laughs> uh but there's a guy up in Mass. Uh, he's been helping me out. His name's Trevor Good. He's six seven, uh, seventy seven inch reach. So he's pretty much Trey Waters. Uh, fights a little differently, um, but he's a welterweight as well. So it gives me a good look. If I can hit six seven, I can hit six five. Oh, that's what I wrote down. That's why I thought he was six seven because I wrote that you've been training. This is what I wrote. I said training with six seven mofos to prep for the Waters height question mark. I thought yes. it was saying Trey, Trey Waters six seven, but yeah, that's a tall boy, especially for like uh, welterweight. Like, how tall are you? Six one? I fucking wish, dude. Come no, on, I'm trying I'm to help ten. you out, bro. I'm five <laughs> ten, man. Yeah, that's like he's a. I guess he's a skinny guy, and it's interesting too because grapplers. Trey Waters is primarily a grappler, usually short, stocky. You know, like that's like the wrestling base. So, like, what do you make of Trey Waters' style? Like, how do you deal with a long, lanky wrestler? It's just a little bit weird. Um, so I would say he, uh, he, he likes to, he likes to stand. He likes to strike. Um, he loves to box. That's, I think that's what he prefers to. He's had a couple submission wins. Um, he goes, I think his biggest thing is he, uh, he has submission wins because people try to wrestle him and he quickly transitions to, uh, jiu-jitsu like when he fought Bonfim as soon as Bonfim shoot he started going for that guillotine uh, but I think he's not I don't think he enjoys grappling as much as he enjoys striking I think he's because from the grappling that I've seen I don't think he's as high level or that he's that interested in grappling he usually wants to get away get back to his feet and keep people away he wants to stay on the outside pump his jab hit that counter right uh, things like that uh, I, the only time he shot when he shot against Quinlan, it was just because he was tired and he was yeah, he wanted to secure the last few seconds of the win. Um, the but I mean, if you're if he tries to shoot on me, you're 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 going down seven inches, man. It's gonna you're gonna have a hard time getting to my hips just naturally. Uh, and I'm also a great wrestler, so I'm not really worried about it. So you know, without like giving away too much of your game plan, are you wanting to bring the grapple into this one a little more, or are you completely content with striking? With I don't know if there's actually a reach advantage. I just know there's a height advantage. Yeah, he has a four and a half inch reach advantage. He has seventy seven inch reach. Mine's seventy two and a half. Um, and no, I mean I'm definitely gonna grapple him um, once I get close to him. Uh, but I gotta get close to him first. So there's gotta be some striking, and I've gotta execute the game plan there. He's going to try to keep me, and from what I've heard in some interviews, he's going to try to keep me away. Um, he 
uh, he's, he was talking about at one point about trying to making me grow tired and frustrated with trying to get inside. Um, so I'm assuming he's going to be trying to pop, pop his jab and just run away and circle, circle, circle. Um, but I don't really get tired. So I'm, I don't mind chasing him all night if I have to. And that would be interesting too, because we've only really seen you in the UFC, whether it's UFC or contender series, quick, very violent, very uh, explosive performances. So if, if you're fighting a guy who's longer, who's going to be popping a jab and keeping range, like, I guess, how do you settle in comfortably with a 15 minute fight opposed to cracking someone and knowing you're going to go in there and blast them away in two, three, four, five minutes? Um, so I think, um, I, from what I, I believe I'm going to be able to outstrike him. I believe I'm going to be able to get inside. Um, if he keeps me away, I, he doesn't fight at a pace. He's never fought at a pace nearly as fast as I have. So I think if he tries to fight, if he tries to get away, um, the whole, entire time, he's going to have to move so fast, um, at my pace or I'm going to get it. And eventually you're going to get tired from moving at my pace because you're not used to it. Even if you've done a ton of cardio up until this point and you feel super ready for it, you've never done that in the cage. So you're not used to it. I fight at a hundred miles an hour. Uh, the, so you're just, you're going to get tired. So if I have to walk in and eat a few shots to get to the inside or to make you tired, then I will. I don't mind. I've done it before. I'll do it again. <laughs> Yeah, man, that shin holds up, brother. That shin holds up. And this fight's cool because you get some fans that are in America. Your debut, you had to go into enemy waters a little bit. So are you excited to uh, get some rowdy American fans behind you? Absolutely. I think uh, potentially I think uh, this is where I'll get more of a following. Like I got my win in the debut. I got some momentum. Uh, but then it kind of got halted by the accident time off. Um Walk away healthy from this one. Don't crash any cars um, and be on the American so be on American soil this time. Uh, I'll get a better fall and I'll get more momentum going into the next one. You have any thoughts on St. Louis? Like my uh, my wife's family is from St. Louis. I've been there quite a few times. I was <laughs> hoping to go down to this car. It's not going to happen. But what are your thoughts on St. Louis? Kind of a random spot. Yeah, I mean, I don't really know much about it. All I know is that Missouri has a lot of crime. I know there's that arch. So, but I'll go see that. Outside of that, I don't really know shit about it. Missouri's weird, dude. It's like, you'd think it's like bumblefucky, but it's not at all. It's like super developed. And then like, even the like rural areas are like very suburban and just highways everywhere. It's a weird state, but St. Louis is a nice city and there's some great food. So after you make weight, chow down, bro. I got you. I would, I'm so excited to be able to eat whatever I want. Yeah, we don't we don't need to talk about all that good barbecue right now. I know you're uh, I know you're cutting that weight, man. Sorry about it. It's funny that you mentioned barbecue. I've had some like someone just invited me to uh, enjoy some smoked ribs, and then they the weekend last weekend I got invited to like a barbecue festival, and it's just like, dude, I can't do these things. I'm not gonna walk around and just smell it all. Well, you saw on my Instagram. I did my first like grappling uh, tournament since freaking high school this year, so I had to cut some weight. <laughs> That whole week, man, I was like, shut up, leave me alone. No, I don't want to go to dinner. I can't. It's just so, yeah, you guys and you cut way more weight than I did. So props to you guys. That's why you all are the Warriors uh, getting paid like you do. But um, Billy, win here, man. Two and oh with the UFC, three and oh, if you count contender series. I know you probably two finishes after this one. So what's next, man? Like you want to make up for some lost time? How many more you want to get this year? I'd like three this year. Um, I think I can do this one um, late July, August, um, and then end of the year. Um, and that'll be a nice, solid year. That'll be three fights. That's some great momentum. That's some, a great pace um, as long as my body is willing. Um, and the UFC is willing, too, because it's one thing to want to fight. It's another one to get. Uh, but it's uh, – and it's hard, too. It's I always feel so weird, like, because, uh, like, I don't care so much about names right now. I don't care about big arenas. Uh, for me, it's just let's just stack wins. Let's just get win after win after win so I can build up some momentum, get a good following, and then I'll start calling people out. And then I'll start getting big arenas and get on cards and uh, get, on main, get on a main card or something. Uh, 
But who knows? I mean, if I get a nice highlight reel and they want to shoot me up a little faster, they shoot me up a little faster. Um, I All the people that I want to fight are further ahead of me. So it's hard to call people out. It's like, if I want to, like, I want to fight Shopcott. I can't call out Shopcott. He's not going to fight me. Right. I want to fight. I would love to fight Bo Nickel. Bo Nickel's a weight class up and he's fighting on main card. So I'm probably not going to get a fight against him. Um, and it's, it's like, he's a weight class up too. That's, um, and if like, I could try to call out, if I, if when I beat Trey Waters, I could try to call out bomb Fiend cause he beat him. Uh, but bomb Fiend's like six and zero in the UFC right now. So why is he going to risk it to fight a guy who's two and zero? Um, so it's, it's hard for me to it's like start calling people out. Like I, I just, I don't know how to operate it. Um, the situation. Well, I mean, just from my perspective, I think it's even cool, both as a fan and someone who covers the sport. I think it's cool when fighters even say, this is who I want to fight. Like you're saying, you're very honest. You're not in a position to fight Bo Nickel or Shavkat, but you could be someday very soon. So for you to even say, I want those kind of fights that like, that's, it's not out of disrespect. It's not like you're talking shit. It's just like, you want to have those very high level matchups. You know, those are the names that are there. So I think it's good to tell people that's who you want and that's who you're working towards. And then like you said, dude, finish this contract out, stack up two, three more wins with it, get a new contract, get that pay increase, get to those rankings, start calling people out. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's yeah. a smart way to do it. It's a business. You know this. 100%. And like, that's why like, I, I'm not as sure what, like, what to do other than just stack wins. Just get wins right now. That's all you got to focus on. And once you get some weight behind your name, now you can start calling some shots. Uh, you haven't fought cans yet, and Trey Water isn't a can, but my manager side of me says, hey, man, this four, these first four fights, you just you just knock out some guys and stack that record, bro. So you're doing the right thing, man. But you're not fighting cans. <laughs> These Listen, guys are tough. There's other guys. There's other guys fight cans. There's there's other guys who fight cans and in the UFC too. Not as much because the UFC doesn't have nearly that many cans. Uh, but I mean, I would love one. I would love to fight a can. They offered me someone, <laughs> or not offered me. Someone else mentioned it. It's like, hey, I could try to get you this fight with this guy. I was like, please, like that would be an easy fight. I would love to do that. But then they're like, oh no, we're gonna cut. Him. I, I, that that was yeah. one of the best quotes ever. You just said, "I would love to fight a can." <laughs> I love it, man. It's because like if like if you and it's funny because like you usually like so you fight the way that my coach looks at it. Um, you fight all the toughest guys you can as an amateur because it doesn't matter. You fight everything you get so that you see all high level shit as an amateur. Um, and then as a pro, you don't necessarily fight cans. You maybe fight one fight that's a tune up fight so that you can get a little more comfortable. Or you fight smart. It. Yes. Um, and then you take a couple bigger fights here and there, more of a serious opponent, high level guy, but you fight smart on your way up. Um, but for me, it's been fucking stud after stud after stud after stud. But then when you stop getting the stud and you get someone, it's like, oh, okay, you'll murk them and it'll just bump you up there. So yeah. keep doing your thing, bro. Cage Fury, who is the promotion I'm real tight with, they, their motto is no easy fights. And everyone that makes out of that promotion into the UFC they're all, you know, Aljamain Sterling, like they're Caitlin Chukagian. They're big, successful names, and it happens because they didn't take easy fights. So keep doing your thing. It'll pay off. Appreciate it. It'll pay off. Um, but Billy, last one for me, man. With the win, aside from fighting, anything going on this summer? Anything big to celebrate? Any fun plans? Yeah. Um, I mean, my birthday is going to be in June. Uh, my girl and I, we're going to go down to Bonnaroo in Tennessee. Where? Uh, go yeah. Um, and gonna get some tattoos gotta start got, putting more shit on me um i gotta figure out what i want for a chest piece it's just so hard to decide um and all the other pieces like i want to get one of those uh I, I don't know the name is one but the yakuza tattoos like the back pieces i want to get one of those one day but that's like that's like 20 grand so that's gonna be down the line <laughs> so i don't um, know if did i tell you my dad owns a tattoo shop no you did not you ever in my area let me know but sorry i interrupted you continue no no you're good man that's good. That's valuable information to know. Uh, I got you. Yeah, just just living life, keep moving. Uh, um, I I've got my uh, my shrink wrapping business. That's gonna be the seasons in fall and whatnot. But I'm gonna try to grow it this year a bit more. Uh, and hopefully, I'd like to leave my job as long as I get a bonus, maybe another fight. If I get if I get to renegotiate a contract, get a long contract, maybe some bigger sponsors, uh, and it, then I can leave and kind of just focus more on fighting what i want to do 
But the biggest thing is just set myself up for success in the future. Love it, man. You're young. You're hungry. You're already doing your thing. So you're on the right track from my perspective. I don't know who I am. I'm just someone that really likes you and I'm your friend. So I think you're doing it right, buddy. So keep keep doing your thing, bro. Um, but Billy, before I get you out of here, anything you'd like to say to all the fans watching this interview and uh, tuning into the fight? If so, take it away. Absolutely. Um, huge thank you to my team. Um, they're the reason I'm here. Um, takes more than just one to go down this journey. Um, grateful to my sponsors, uh, Cardboard Kids, uh, Nummies Bakery, Raise the Standard, Accelerated Athletics. Um, it, it's I work on my own, and I've got a lot of shit that I got to pay for. Um, the UFC helps out a lot, but there are still things that I got to cover along the way, recovery and whatnot, and they do a great job helping me out, supporting me. Um, and we all know that this game, a huge part of this game is social media, and they're helping me with that as well. Um, and, and just tune in May 11th for it. If you want to see a banger fight? We're gonna we're gonna have one. Billy Goff with the bangers. May 11th, St. Louis, ESPN Plus. Check it out. This kid's only going to be on the prelims for so long. Main card coming very soon. Billy, thank you very much for the time, man. And uh, kick some fucking ass, all right?